the record should reflect that juror number 267 is now present in the courtroom. Hi, how are you? I'm good, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm good, I think. All right, I just have a question for you. Uh, the question is, have you recognized any witness who has testified thus far? Um, I did recognize the woman that, can I give her name? Yes. I think it was Carbajal, who was the mother of the boy that went to the school I work at. Okay. And, all right. Um, let me have you step up for just a moment, okay? Okay. Thank you. All right, the record should reflect that juror number 267 has now exited the courtroom. What I propose asking her is, um, how well she knows the witness and whether anything about her knowledge of the witness would affect her ability to be fair and impartial as a juror in this trial and to assess the credibility of the witness in the same way as any other witness consistent with my instructions. Is there any objection to proceeding in that fashion from the people? Any objection from the defense? No objection. If I could uh, ask the court to ask her um, how many interactions she had with the witness, whether she will have interactions after this case, and if she has any concerns, but if she does run into Carbonell um, after the case, if there's any concerns as far as what her verdict I think those are appropriate. And her name is Carbonell, right? And Ms. Tish McGuire is nodding her head yes, okay. Okay, let's bring her back in, please. Let's bring juror number 267 back in the courtroom. The record should reflect that juror number 267 is back in the courtroom. How well do you know uh, Ms. Carbonell? In other words, how, how many times do you think you've interacted with her? Only when she brought her son in and signed him in and signed him out at school. And so I didn't even recognize her name. I just noticed her up there and thought she looked familiar. It was her son that I knew better. Do, does the name of Carbonell sound familiar? Not at all. Not at all? Okay, but you think that it's the woman who testified yesterday, right? Yes, because she kept mentioning her son's name. Okay, and uh, have you ever talked with her before? Just when she signed her son in and out. I mean, I knew why she was taking him out you uh, know, for therapy. But how, how, how often has that happened? Hmm. Well, it happened quite a bit. I mean, she, any of us would help her. You know, it just depends on who was available at the time to get her son down and 
have her sign him out. When, when she did that, did you ever have any uh, conversations with her about anything other than just signing out her son? I had a conversation with her the day that her son was coming out of the nurse's office, and he freaked out a little bit. How long ago was she, that? How um, long ago was that? That was quite a while ago. <laughs> I don't really remember. I just remember her coming in to pick him up, and um, a bunch of high school kids had come in for a choir concert or something like that to perform and when he saw them he was coming out he kind of freaked out a little bit so I jumped up and I went and grabbed him and took him back into the nurse's office and she came back in there when she signed him out but I really don't recall a conversation with her okay at length of any kind okay um, when do you think this incident that you just talked about happened? Can you give us an estimate? Was it a year ago, two years ago, three years ago? Well, it was the year of the shooting. And you don't recall what conversation? I really don't. Okay. I, I come across a lot of parents and would I you, really don't. Would you describe your relationship with her as an acquaintanceship or as a friendship or as something else? More like an acquaintance. I had to really look at her to make sure she was kind of who I thought she was. When, when I was think she wore glasses before, so, and that kind of threw me. When, when was the last time that you interacted with her or that you saw her? Um, probably close to the end of that school year. So a couple of years She didn't ago. come in a lot, but just for the therapy. So a couple of years ago? Yeah. Um, are, are you uh, anticipating um, seeing her again or interacting with her again? I would not know how to reach her. <laughs> okay. And so, no. Uh, and do you have any concerns about your ability to be a fair and impartial juror in this case, um, given your knowledge of this witness, Ms. Carbonell, and your acquaintanceship with her? No. Uh, are you, uh, any concerns at all about your ability to assess her credibility just the same way as you would assess the credibility of other witnesses? I would be fair. You would be fair. And so any concerns at all about your ability and willingness to assess her credibility the same way as you assess the credibility of other witnesses? No. Any concerns about your ability and willingness to assess Ms. Carbonell's credibility consistent with my instructions? No. Uh, and finally, do you have any concerns at all about uh, the potential of running into her at some point in the future at school uh, and whether that um, anticipation is going to affect the verdict that you render in this case? No. And I don't think I'll be running into her at all. I'm not going back to the school until this is over. Anyway, so. And, and I understand that, but uh, even after the trial is over, do you have any concerns that, um, that uh, if you return a verdict that perhaps sh uh, you would think that she wouldn't like or wouldn't agree with that you'd have to explain that to her or that it would make it uncomfortable for you to face her? Is that going to be something that's no. going to be in the back of your mind as a juror? No, it would not bother me at all. And no. is, that, is that something that's going to influence you in any way as a juror? No. No. Okay. And you seem confident in the answers that you're providing. Yes. Do you have any, any concerns that you want to talk to me about? No. No. Okay. All right. Let's have you wait outside, okay? Okay. Thank you. All right, any, uh, any, any other questions that the people would like me to ask or any other record that the people want to make? No, Your Honor. Any other questions, Ms. Brady, that you would like me to ask or any other record you want to make? Would you like to make questions at the bench? Yes.
Are the people ready? Yes. Is the defense ready? Yes. Okay, let's bring the jury in, please. Actually, uh, bring bring back to sixty seven one more time briefly. The record should reflect that juror two sixty seven is back in the courtroom. We're still outside the presence of the rest of the jury. Thank you for coming back, and thank you for your patience. Um, I, I just had a, a final request. Please do not discuss with any other juror what we talked about here today okay. or your knowledge of Ms. Carbonell or your knowledge of, of her son. Will you promise me that you will follow that instruction? I promise. Okay, and have, I'm assuming you haven't talked to the other jurors about any of this? No. Okay, great. I'm shaking All right. my head. Okay, thank you. She said no. All right, keep it that way. Do not discuss with them anything about uh, um, your knowledge of Ms. Carbonell, her son, or our discussion here in the courtroom just now, okay? I promise. All right, thank you. Let's bring the jury in, please. Welcome back. Folks, please be seated. The record should reflect that the jury has joined us again. I hope you had a good lunch, everyone. <laughs> Great. All right. Call your next witness, please, Ms. Teach McGuire. The people call Alex Espinoza. your right hand for me so that I can administer an oath. You solemnly swear or affirm in the penalty of law that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do, Your Honor. Please be seated. Could you please tell us your full name and spell your first and last names? Alex Espinoza, A-L-E-X-E-S-P-I-N-O-Z-A. Ms. Tish McGuire, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Were you at the Century 16 movie theater in Aurora, Colorado on July 19th of 2012? Yes, ma'am, I was. Did that go into the early morning of July 20th of 2012? Yes, ma'am. Why were you there that day? To watch, uh, to watch a movie. Do you remember what movie? Uh, the Dark Knight. Ms. Tishman Wire, can you approach, and would counsel for the defense please approach as well?
step down for just a moment, sir, and then uh, we'll be back with you. Uh, folks, I, I know that you just came back uh, from lunch, but uh, there is something I need to take up with one of you. And so I'm going to ask you to step out with the exception of uh, juror number 737. I'm going to ask the rest of you to step out, uh, take a, a short break, and then we'll uh, bring you back as soon as we can. Okay? Thank you. Remember that my admonitions apply during the break, each and every break. So even though we're taking a short break, they apply. Thank you. Okay, the record should reflect that with the exception of juror number 737, all of the jurors have exited the courtroom. Everyone may be seated, um, and uh, Mr. Espinosa should wait outside if he's not outside already. And you know, we're also given the record at the bench. I also asked his wife to wait outside as well. Great, thank you. Yes. All right, juror number 737. Uh, the reason why I asked you to stay back is because of the note that you submitted, which I have marked as uh, question form number 69. You are indicating that you know this witness and his wife. And this witness is Alex Espinosa, correct? How, how do you know uh, Mr. Espinosa and his wife? Um, I actually met him. When exactly do you think you met him? Uh, knowingly, like his name and stuff? Because, I mean, he's probably come to events. Um, knowing him as an individual, uh, no more than a couple months. But it was after you were selected to be on the jury? Um, certainly, I, I don't know necessarily if I met him before, but certainly after I filled out the Uh, but when you were here for your individual questioning session, did you know uh, that this person, Mr. Espinosa, uh, and or his wife were witnesses? Certainly not. No, okay. And how would you describe your relationship now with Mr. Espinosa and his wife? Um, I'd say we're uh, friends. My wife's been uh, on the books, like we're planning to go to the earlier today. That's why I had the note ready. Okay, so new friends. Yeah. Uh, anything about that relationship that you think would affect your ability to be a fair and impartial juror in this trial? Uh, I haven't done it for that long. And if he testifies, uh, are you going to be able to assess his credibility the same way that you would assess the credibility of any other witness? I believe so. And are, do you have any concerns about your ability or willingness to do that? Any concerns about your ability or willingness to follow my instructions on credibility? No, sir. Even with respect to these two witnesses? No, sir. And, and my questions, you should understand my questions to apply to both Mr. Espinosa and his wife. Yes. So your answers are the same with respect to both? Yes, sir. Are you closer to one or the other? Definitely Alex. I know him better than um, What about the fact that he has purchased some products from your company? Anything about that that you think would affect um, your ability to be a fair and impartial juror in this trial? No. Uh, no, you know, he's on pop-up events, especially. Uh, he's offered to help at those, so I don't even know if that's really something that he's uh, I think Well, if you remain on the jury, um, I'm going to require you to have no contact with him throughout the remainder of the trial. Right. 
uh, and to uh, have no transactions with them. So okay. is that a problem or is that something that uh, you think is manageable for you? We, we can communicate that to them, and then they will understand, okay? okay? Yeah. So any problems with that at all? No. Um, have you discussed the case at all? Certainly not. Has he ever mentioned anything about this case or anything related to, to this case? Uh, he one time mentioned... What do, you, what do you remember him saying about it? Like I said, it was in passing. Uh, and again, it was... <coughs> and was that before you were selected as a juror? Yes. And was that before you came in to fill out a questionnaire? Did you mention anything about your questionnaire or the fact that you had come in to fill out a questionnaire or that you had been summoned to be a juror? No, sir. Okay, let me have you uh, wait outside for just a moment, okay? Thank you. <coughs> All right, Ms. Stitch McGuire, or uh, who wants to address the court on behalf of the people? We have no further questions, Your Honor, at this point. Any other record that you want me to make? No, thank you, Your Honor. Any requests from the court? No, Your Honor. All right. What about the defense, Ms. Brady? Any other questions that you want me to ask? Yes. Yes, I can ask him that. Anything else? Okay. Um, I think it also makes sense related to that question to inquire whether he feels any sense of loyalty uh, to the Espinosas given their uh, transactions, business transactions in the past and given their friendship. Um, I think that makes sense. Is that okay with you? It is and, and perhaps again whether he has any concerns that if he sees the Espinosas after the trial, if uh, that makes him uncomfortable Okay, let's bring him back, please. I think those questions are all appropriate. The record should reflect that juror number 737 is back in the courtroom. Some, some uh, additional questions for you, sir, and I very much appreciate your patience with me. No, no. Um, 
do you feel any uh, sympathy for the Espinosas that you would not uh, have if you had not met them? Uh, sympathy? Um, I, don't, I don't think so, no. Okay. A any kind of uh, sense of loyalty to them that, that you think you feel that, that would affect your ability to be a fair and impartial juror in this trial? I, I don't feel like that's, yeah, like I said, we're new friends, so... Um, yeah, my commitment to being impartial to the trial itself is certainly even has more of a... <laughs> I have more experience with that than with them, so... Okay. And um, do you have any concerns about seeing the Spinozas after the trial uh, and having to explain to them or justify to them your verdict or uh, how you may have viewed this case? I hadn't thought of that. Um, I don't honestly know. I, I don't think I can answer that question. All right. Can you you want a little bit of time to think about it? <laughs> if you, if it would be all right, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. okay. It's important, uh, and you know we want complete honesty. In this case is uh, too important for me not to insist on complete honesty. So Absolutely. I can give you a little break uh, if that helps. Yeah. And then uh, uh, maybe after the break, if you think you're comfortable answering the question, we'll proceed. Uh, I want to make sure that if you end up staying as a juror, that you're not going to be concerned. Uh, or influenced in any way about thoughts of um, having to justify or explain a particular verdict to either of the Espinosas. Uh, that type of influence should not enter any juror's mind, and if that's going to be the case with you, I need to know about it, okay? Okay. All right, so uh, how about if we take a 10-minute break? Does that help? Yeah, I think that's more than enough time. Okay, great. Yeah. We'll take a five or ten minute break, okay? Okay, thank you. Oh, in the meantime, before you go, please do not discuss any of this with the other jurors. Of course. I'm assuming you haven't mentioned any of this to any of the other jurors. No, sir. Okay. Do not discuss your knowledge of the Espinosas, the business transactions you've conducted with them, or the conversation or, uh, or any part of the discussion that we've had here today with you alone. Okay. All right. Will you promise me that you will follow that instruction? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. We'll be on break for ten minutes uh, and... You know, if you want to be on your own, um, then find a, a place where you can have some private time. Uh, we'll, we'll be on break for five or ten minutes, and then we'll, we'll uh, resume on that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. you. Okay, um, let's take a five or ten minute break, and then uh, we'll resume. Um, I'm being told that the overflow room can barely hear you, Ms. Brady, so please try to use the microphone if you can. All right, thank you. The court will be in recess. Thanks, everyone.